Well, as usual, I let my curiosity get the better of me, and I finally went and got myself a mini mill. You see, I've noticed a lot of online forums discussing these things, and people really seem to like to bash on them. And I'm not convinced. So, at the risk of proving all the people on the internet right, let's check this thing out. Now, I could be completely off base with this, but the complaints I see online sound roughly parallel to what people say about the mini lathe, and I've routinely been impressed with the capabilities of that thing, despite the insistence online that they can't be used to cut anything harder than a potato. The complaints seem to fall into one of the following categories. They can't be used for steel, only aluminum and plastic. They can't be used to hit reasonable tolerances on parts. And then, specific to the type of mini mill I got, the tilting column supposedly constantly goes out of trim. So what I want to do is put these mini mill myths to the test and see how accurate this list is. But before we get to that, there is some setup that we'll need to do to make sure we give this thing a fair shot. First things first, we need to get the packing grease cleaned off, which also gives us a chance to look at the dovetails. From what I can tell, they look pretty respectable. At least I don't see any weird bumps or gouges on them. And once the gibs are tightened and the mill is bolted down to the table, everything feels really solid. And I'll take a couple minutes here to provide a quick word of caution in case you get one of these. This thing needs to be bolted down. It is very top heavy and it would be super unpleasant to have this drop onto your lap unexpectedly while you're in the middle of cutting something. So don't put it off like I've been doing with the mini lathe and bolt your mill down. Okay, so with that PSA over and now that the mill isn't going to fall onto our lap mid video, we can get started on dialing everything in. I threw together a simple alignment jig to hold my dial indicator and did a sweep to check the alignment. With a bit of precision hammering, I was pretty quickly able to adjust it to a less than one thousandth of an inch drop across the bed. I'm pretty happy with this, we could probably spend more time dialing it in closer, but I'd want a tense indicator for that and this is good enough for me. The y-axis proved slightly more challenging to align. I had initially thought that the shims would need to go in this rotating interface here, but I realized that we could undo the column L bracket and shim the column into alignment. This was as close as I could get with the soda can shims, but better shim stock should let you get closer if you choose to go this route. One thing I won't argue with the internet about is the claim that these gears are crazy loud. Okay, I guess not that loud, but it's louder than I want it to be. I tried following the gear mesh adjustment and lubrication instructions that came in the user manual of this mill, but it didn't seem to do much to quiet it down. I think this means we'll have to make ourselves a belt drive upgrade, so let me know if you're interested in seeing that and I'll add it to the list of videos to make. Cool, well I think that is enough setup for the day. Let's get a vise mounted and do some actual cutting. I have a keyway I want to cut for a bushing I've been working on, and this seems like as good of a place to start as any. So I mounted a 4mm end mill in the- I'm just kidding. The astute among you are about halfway through a comment telling me not to mill with a Jacobs chuck. For those who are concerned, do not worry. I made sure to get a proper ER32 collet holder and a set of collets to match when I was buying the mill. So I promise, no more sketchy tool holding setups for me. Well then, I guess it's time for us to test out our first myth. Can the mini mill cut steel? This bushing, for better or for worse, is made from a piece of steel rod, which, believe the internet or not, I turned down on the mini lathe. Wait, how did that sketchy boring bar setup get in there? Quick, next clip. Okay, that's more like it. Though starting to do some milling brings up a weird quirk of this thing. The hand wheels move the bed at 62 and a half thou per revolution, which is just awful to deal with. I don't want to throw any more toolbox at anything for a bit, so instead of a DRO, I wrote a program on my shop calculator to determine the number of full revolutions plus remaining thousands to turn to in the plus and minus direction. Definitely recommend doing this if you don't get a DRO, it makes things way easier to keep track of. So then, I guess it's moment of truth time. Will this work? Wow, that was extremely smooth. Honestly, a bit smoother than I had expected. Uh, I guess it is a pretty small end mill though, so maybe we should try something with a slightly more aggressive cut. I have some aluminum that I need to square up for another project, so let's give that a go with a bigger end mill. Oh, did you see that? It looks like the tram shifted a bit while we were cutting. 
This could be my fault though. I suspected that I didn't tighten down the locking bolt enough. I was really worried about over torquing it while I was working on it. Let's properly tighten it down this time and give it another shot. And with one myth down, let's see if we can come up with something useful to make to test out the other two. I mean, come on, are we tool collectors or are we makers? Wait, no, that- As for what to make, I figure that making some T-slot nuts is kind of a rite of passage when it comes to getting a new mill, so let's do that. And in the spirit of doing a proper test, I picked up a chunk of cold rolled steel. Luckily the mill came with a couple T-slot nut samples, so I took one and measured it up, which gives us some nice dimensions to try and hit. I cut a section off the bar to approximately the right size to make four of them, and got one set up in the mill. Because I don't know exactly how far I can push this mill, I started off with a 20 thou depth of cut just to remove the saw marks. Once I had the saw marks removed, I upped the depth of cut to about 40 thou to bring it to the dimension that we needed, and got similarly good results. That's pretty satisfying. I think we should try to cut the side profile without moving the z-axis. Alright, I'm thinking about 20 thou width of cut at a time, at the full depth seems like a good number to shoot for. Conventional milling, of course. Oof, gotta love those chips. Hmm, okay, that's not good. What happened here? Oh, oops, I definitely got distracted while I was filming and completely forgot to mill the sides to dimension after squaring up the stock. No worries, that can be fixed simply by replacing the part in the vise and cutting off the extra material. Now to flip it and do the same to the upper section of the T and we should be done milling. Last things last, I switched the mill over into low gear and drilled and tapped a hole in the middle. I don't know about you, but this looks like a T-slot nut to me. And checking on the dimensions, I would say that's not too shabby. Before we go, let's break out that 12mm end mill again and see if we get any more shifting when we cut with it. I'm going for about 10 thou of cutting depth to simulate a light surface cleanup pass like before, but this time we'll do it in steel and not aluminum. Is anyone else feeling a bit nervous? Okay, cool. Zeroes all around. I think that about rounds off our list. We'll call it two and a half myths resolved here. The tilting column seems like it can be an issue if you don't tighten it down enough, and despite the fact that it didn't move once I torqued everything down, my confidence is shaken, so I'm probably gonna make some changes in the future to maybe make that connection a little bit more rigid. In any case, that's all I got for now. I hope you folks enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time.